Good morning, church family. If you will, let's stand and sing together this morning. I saw the light. Well, I wonder if so wingless, my life filled with sin. I wouldn't live my to say no end. Then Jesus came like a stranger in the night. Pray. Amen. Good morning to you. It's wonderful to see you here. I couldn't clap that slow. I had to speed up. It's a fast song, but uh, I, I stay out of rhythm depending on who you talk to. But uh, it's so lovely to see you here, and I want to welcome you to Lancaster Baptist Church. We're so glad you've chosen to worship our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ with us here on this beautiful Palm Sunday. A little chilly this morning, but it's going to keep warming up. Amen? Amen. Amen. Well, if you are a guest with us for the first time or the first time in a long time, we do have our special portion of our bulletin. We'd love for you to fill it out as much as you're comfortable with. Place it in the offering plate when it goes by in a few moments or put it in my hand after the service. I'd love to meet with you, talk with you, do whatever I can to serve you and your family. Well, it's a big day here, Palm Sunday, and later today, the Easter egg hunt. Looking forward to that. So since you're already standing, would you greet one another in the name of Christ? <laughs>
Well, amen. Our scriptural call to worship this morning, <laughs> Psalm 24, verses 1 through 6. God's word says this, The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and those who dwell therein. For he has founded it upon the seas and established it upon the rivers. Who shall ascend the hill of the Lord, and who shall stand in his holy place? He who has clean hands and a pure heart, who does not lift up his soul to what is false and does not swear deceitfully. He will receive blessing from the Lord and righteousness from the God of his salvation. Such is the generation of those who seek him, who seek the face of the God of Jacob. We'll talk about this in our altar call too, of course, but you think about that. Who, who can stand in his holy place? Who can be in the presence of God? Only he who has clean hands and a pure heart. Well, that creates a problem for you, but I can tell you it certainly creates a problem for me. But there is somebody whose hands remain totally clean and whose heart has always been pure, and that is the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? That's who we proclaim here this morning. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we're thankful that because our hands cannot be cleansed by ourselves or by anything else on this earth, you sent Jesus to cleanse us and to take the penalty, to take the punishment for our sins and the sins of all who would come to him in faith. And so we just pray now on this beautiful Palm Sunday with thankfulness that you sent your son Jesus to earth and also you sent him into Jerusalem on a day just like today. We know what would happen there just a few days later. He would be crucified. We just pray your seek to worship you through song, and we're thankful that you've gathered us here. We're thankful for those listening on radio this morning. Pray that they'd feel the comfort of your love and feel connection with this church family as well. We lift up all those in our church family this past week, uh, just going through various trials. We had more hospital visits. We had other issues pop up. We're thankful that our hope is not in this life, but in the life eternal because of what your son Jesus did for us. And yet, like we're talking about here in just a few moments, this earthly life is important. It certainly is. And so I pray that we would enjoy it in the ways in which you have prescribed us to, that we would delight ourselves in you, and then you would give us the desires of our hearts. So change our hearts, Lord, to desire what you desire. Oh, we pray that, Lord. And so we pray now as we enter into this time of worship, as we've already begun uh, just praising you through song, and as we've already begun reading your word and sharing time of fellowship, we just pray you would focus our hearts and our minds on worshiping you and you alone this morning, even as we have many wonderful things we're looking forward to, perhaps later today, likely the Easter egg hunt or other things, or family things. We pray that right now, though, we would be focused on worshiping you because that's why we exist and so as we seek to worship you through song and through the reading of your word, through prayer, through the giving of tithes and offerings, through your preached word, through a time of response, we just pray you'd receive all the honor and the glory because you alone are due it. Be with us now as we continue. Through your son Jesus' name that we pray. Amen.
his blood we need that blood lose all that guilty stains amen good morning church if and offerings. This morning's scripture reading is from uh, Matthew 21, verses 1 uh, through 11. When Matt uh, texted me the scripture this week, I couldn't help but remember this past Wednesday night in our uh, kids' rock time in the group that uh, Susie and Shelly of the colt glued on it and uh, all the children had the palm leaves and I don't know if he's here this morning or not I don't necessarily see him but justice couldn't wait to be Jesus so all right verse they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethphage on the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and at once you will find a donkey tied there with her colt by her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, tell him that the Lord needs them, and he will send them right away. This took place to fulfill what was spoken through the prophet. Say to the daughter of Zion, See, your king comes to you, gentle and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had instructed them. They brought the donkey and the colt, placed their cloaks on them, and Jesus sat on them. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, while others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and those that follow shouted, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. When Jesus entered Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred and asked, Who is this? The crowds answered, This is Jesus the prophet from Nazareth in Galilee. Let's pray. Dear God, we just, uh, we thank you for this upcoming season of Easter when we remember the death of our blessed Savior, but more importantly, we remember his resurrection, and his victory over death, and the hope that that gives us as Christians. Now, dear Lord, we just ask that you take these tithes and and offerings, that you multiply them, that you bless them, and that you bless the, the giver as well as the gift. And may these tithes and offerings further the spread of the gospel here, not only within our community, but within our state, our country, and our world. And it's for all these things we uh, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.
Good morning. There is no any Armstrong video this morning. Although I tried to have Chris upstairs download it with no internet, and he informed me that when you don't have internet, you can't download anything. I said, well, that makes sense. I just wasn't thinking that when I, uh, when I asked him to do that. So, uh, But uh, it's a wonderful, beautiful Palm Sunday, and thankful to Walt reading that and reminding us of what happened almost 2,000 years ago as Jesus came into Jerusalem. And so at this time, we are dismissing our little ones at Children's Church. They'll be coming out right this direction. Exciting day, Palm Sunday, Easter egg hunt later. Over a thousand Easter eggs are ready. Oh yeah, we easily got more than a thousand. No, 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 no. I've and y'all be so proud. I've only had three or four pieces of candy. I did break down, but I did not have any before they were packed. I waited, make sure. All right, a good crop. Well, it's a very exciting day. I'm looking forward to it. I hope you are as well. We apologize for any tech problems this morning, those of you that hopefully are listening on, on uh, radio and not Facebook, but we're thankful. I need to be thankful. God allowed us to discover those problems last night, and so we weren't as blindsided this morning. Uh, we are making good progress in our Annie Armstrong goal. We have this uh, helpful map here that we've been coloring in, and I think we've got 22 states colored in, which means we're almost half of the way there. We've got a few weeks left. And I just want to encourage you to continue to be faithful in giving to that. 3,000, 3,000 missionaries in North America are counting on our gifts. Remember, about 50% of the annual budget uh, for North American Mission Board, roughly 50%, I don't remember exactly, uh, but comes from this offering right here. Isn't that incredible? And so I appreciate uh, your generosity in that. But turn to 1 Peter chapter 3. Uh, if you haven't already, that's where we are. Uh, last week, we, we did just two verses, verses 8 and 9. Um, so remember, I just want to remind all of us, remember verse 8 is our memory verse for this month. I was so excited that after church uh, last Sunday, after service, we got to give a candy bar out to a young person. And so that was very exciting. And so I want to encourage you to, to take advantage of that and encourage your children to, to do that. Uh, but we took away four main points. The first is just a reminder that in the high priestly prayer, uh, so right around this time, right, I mean, as soon as even a couple hours before you know, um, before Good Friday, uh, Jesus is praying the high priestly prayer. Jesus prayed for our unity. Uh, second point, we were reminded that brotherly love holds it all together there in verse 8. Um, we continue then with the very countercultural command to bless others even when we are cursed. And, and finally, we are reminded just as we continue to talk about uh, so much instruction for the Christian life and, and just how difficult these things have always been, right? But certainly in a culture like ours today, we rely on the Holy Spirit to power us in sanctification. We never rely on ourselves. So, covering three verses today in 1 Peter chapter 3, let us pray, asking the Lord's blessing upon our study. Heavenly Father, we're grateful for this opportunity we have, uh, this time you've appointed for us to come into this place to worship you freely. And so we pray that that's already happened. We pray it continues now as we turn to the study of your word. And so I just pray, like we pray every week, for the courage to believe your word and to stand upon your word, no matter the cultural tides, waves, or currents. We pray for humility, the humility to submit to your word and actually do what it says. And we also pray for hunger, a hunger for righteousness, a hunger for your word, a hunger to see the lost saved in our very midst. And again, even as we look forward to the Easter egg hunt and other just great things likely we have planned as families or as a whole church family, in the coming days and week, we pray that you would keep us focused on your son Christ at the center of it all. It's because of him that we can celebrate not only this time of year, but we should be celebrating every day what Jesus did for us. Not because of our goodness, no, but because of your goodness, because of your mercy, because of your love, because of your grace. That you would love the world enough to send your son Jesus to die for it. And so we just pray your blessings upon us now as we continue this morning. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. First Peter in chapter 3, verses 10 and 11 say this, For whoever desires to love life and see good days, let him keep his tongue from evil and his lips from speaking deceit. Let him turn away from evil and do good. Let him seek peace and pursue it. Well, I... 
I hope you did enjoy just doing two verses last week, and now we're going to do 50% more. Amen. We're going to do three verses this week, and I appreciate your patience with me there. I'm really enjoying it. I don't know if you are, but I decided to slow, to, slow us down just a bit to give me some flexibility uh, going into Easter week for a variety of reasons. But uh, clearly, though, because of verse 10, right, I mean, we've talked about that a lot when we talk about context, and we even talk about grammar sometimes. The first word in verse 10 is what? For. So obviously it's rolling us back up into what we talked about last week. So this is kind of Peter's way of, of summarizing at the very least what we talked about last week and probably all of chapter 3 so far. So look again there at, 